so Raven is feuding with the red shirts for the entire month. We talked about a bunch of it already, but there's some bits and pieces that we didn't cover. But the, probably the most important part, we should finish off. Raven faced James Mitchell on the first show of the month. Yeah, okay. This might be my favorite match of the month. Oh, yeah. like I, I gave the Stars Ray a base match a higher rating because it was, like, technically speaking, a better wrestling match. But, like, this was the perfect version of what a James Mitchell-Raven match should look like. Yeah, 100%. And the whole show-long story leading up to it with, like, Mitchell being like, oh, I gotta get the fuck out of here. That was actually, I believe, it wasn't that? That was from the week before. <laughs> yeah, they did one of the things where they showed, like, a quick promo from the week before where after Raven announced that he'll be facing James Mitchell in a, a Last Man Standing match, they, 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 they cut to, like, parking lot footage of James Mitchell trying to run away, and he's like, yo, Hudson, you know how to hotwire a car? <laughs> Which we found out. Scott Hudson does not... <laughs> know how to hotwire a car no but i love that segment and he's like he's checking car doors to see are any of them open <laughs> as if like how did you get here man <laughs> he clearly got a lift it's fine so and even without just those guys specifically this whole show was built up to this too because we open up with the gathering versus laz and kid cash mm-hmm. and um uh <laughs> julio uh dressed up like raven I'm beginning to think that Julio Gennaro might be a little more committed to Raven than CM Punk is. I don't know. I, who, CM Punk is very lost without Raven as well. Yeah, so we had that, obviously that match, which was the lead up to it, uh, which we got, also got to see the natural evolution of the Kid Cash character. He's now a homophobe as well. I, I, on commentary, they were like, NWA TNA have a sense of humor pairing Kid Cash and Laz. And like, is it literally that just because he's a homophobe? Is that what we're saying here? Yeah. Well, because like, Laz is supposed to be like, non-gendered too mm. so like there's it's a real gross bullshit the outrageous laz as well by the way liam he's not laz he's the outrageous <laughs> laz still like looks like a crater wrestler on random but <laughs> i appreciate laz i did i liked it in that match punk did the samoa joe face wash and i'm like is he taking shots at joe here no, he's taking shots at nick gage obviously that's true and by the way the gathering should not have taken that long to put away kid cash and laz that match went like eight minutes so they should have won it in like two and the Gathering looked good as a team. I saw them the couple of times that we saw them this month. They were pretty good together. Mm. After that, we had the Raven promo. Where we get the die, Mitchell, die. Yeah. And he t- tells the Gathering to stay, in, to stay in the back. He doesn't want the Gathering's help again. I like um the subtle punk Raven stuff mm. throughout the entire relationship. Like Mitchell mentioning that his lackeys are being manipulated. Punk no showing and like Julio dressing up, but Punk's just himself. I just like the little things that they that they sprinkled out. Some rare like consistent storytelling throughout the months yeah and even the touch here we're like we've gone a month now of raven being like i don't want help from the gathering anymore we'll talk more about that story as we go through this month as well but like raven had the die mitchell die painted on his chest but so did julio in the opening match yeah so it's like there's the commitment to raven even when raven doesn't want anything to do with them anymore <laughs> punk did not have die mitchell die on his chest no he's not committed to, to raven that much even though he is yeah, so like that's a, it's just a fun little interesting stuff. And it's nice to see these little crumbs mm. throughout. So that does bring us to the Raven and Mitchell last man standing match, which as mentioned, perfect. Absolutely perfect. Yeah. I really enjoyed this a lot. Uh, Mitchell was really good here. Because mm. like, James Mitchell did train to be a wrestler. He did wrestle a little, even though Mike Dene lied. He's like, this is the first James Mitchell match. It's like, no, he trained and he did like some few bits and balls before he did pivot into being a manager and... Most m- most managers do the same pro wrestling training that pro wrestlers do. Yeah, so he, he did take a couple of bumps and he, everything he did looked good. Every, like, and I love the, the story of the match where Raven just beat his ass. He bled. He bled like absolute crazy. One of the few times that blood still felt meaningful in this company. Yeah, because everybody bleeds in TNA. Like Sandman bleeds before every single match. The six-man tag was the most egregious. I was like, I, I don't care about anyone bleeding here except Eric Watts because I think he might die. <laughs> you don't trust them to bleed. No, did you see how much he was bleeding? Oh, yeah. He's committed to the Clockwork Orange match, Liam. Dude, it was bad. It was like, not only because, you have these levels of blood where it's like, oh, like, uh, Joe Legend had good blood in that, where it was like, got all over his forehead and like, looked good. What's, it looked like blood had exploded in his face. (laughs) Because it was watery and it was like a Jackson Pollock painting. Just thrown on his face. It was real, I was concerned. Clearly Watts, a great bleeder. And it was selling it great too, because that was when they were they were um, handcuffed to each other on the outside, mm. and like I forget who who was he handcuffed to. One of the red shirts. I think it was uh, and, Kevin Northcott. 
Or was it Ryan Yeah, Northcott was trying to get in the ring, but because Watts had bled out, he was so heavy, and he couldn't get out to go help his friends. <laughs> but yeah, I, I love the way that they turned this, where the gathering show up at ringside, which is what slightly distracts Raven and allows Mitchell to hit a low blow and gain control for a little bit. Yeah. But then Raven just gets control back, hits him with the, the Raven effect, and counts him out for 10. Raven has conquered James Mitchell. And he's done. Yeah, James, and there's a, a promo from James Mitchell the following week, which is like a post-match one, similar to the CM Punk one that they showed on Rampage, where it's just like him backstage bleeding like absolute shit. Mm. <laughs> Being like, I will come back, but the, uh, I will have to take some time to lick my wounds because you kicked my ass so badly. And like um, Raven mentions in one of his later promos, I'm the guy that drove Jim Mitchell out of TNA. Mm. So after the match, despite their protestations, the gathering is set free, Liam. Raven is like, we are done. I do not need you anymore. Go your own way. Yeah, well, he didn't say he didn't need them anymore. He just said that he had to do this by himself. With his self-righteous attitude. Yeah, it's like, I've always done this by, uh, by my, on my own. I will continue to do it on my own. Not true. Sure. He had a flock. Yeah, the whole thing was he had a flock. <laughs> you, you've literally had a group of followers everywhere you've been. Yeah, but now he's like, uh, I am setting you free. Go do your own thing. It's It's cool. You don't need to follow me around anymore? <laughs> Punk here, just wailing. My favorite thing is they cut to Mike today and Don West to pivot to the main event, and you just hear Punk off camera being like, what are we going to do without Raven? <laughs> what about Raven? <laughs> what about Raven indeed, Punk? So yes, the gathering are like lost puppies without their leader. Fun stuff. Raven and Jim Mitchell received a lot of praise from the wrestlers for their match last week. Obviously, Raven was getting deserved credit for carrying a non-wrestler to a good match. Meanwhile, Mitchell was praised for being a non-wrestler who held his own. And friends were especially impressed with what he did because they are aware of his back problems he struggles with. The cane Mitchell brings on, uh, on television isn't just a gimmick. He uses it off camera to get around. So Mitchell, despite having back problems, despite needing the cane to get around comfortably, did a hell of a job in that match. Yeah. Devil bleeds red. Mmm. So, following week, Raven comes out to try and get his hands on Jarrett, as mentioned. He tries to get a promo, but then the red shirts attack Jarrett. So, later in the show, it's a match made. Raven and a partner faces the red shirt security in a tag team match. We then go backstage where, where the gathering are, are talking to Raven, who's lying bloody on the floor, as he tends to do in these shows. <laughs> and the gathering are like, we don't care if it's Punk or, or Julio. Uh, you know, we'll support either way. Just once you choose one of us to be your partner, that's cool. I like that Raven's just like, <laughs> he's just on the ground he's like these fucking idiots I told them I'm not gonna be with helping them <laughs> like fuck off man and these people won't leave poor Raven alone I, I relate right to Raven here because it was a lot like when I was a kid and my cousins would come to my house mm. and I'm like I just want you to fuck off I don't want you to be here at all why are you still here please go <laughs> Do you think CM Punk also would break all of Raven's action figures and play with his Yu-Gi-Oh cards and ruin their quality Oh, you poor soul. Mm. Do you think? Do you think they would get on his games and delete his save files? Mm. Mm. That's why the Raven Punk feuds happened. <laughs> you deleted See, my freaking what? What game did two thousand like? What? What year was this? Two thousand three. Two thousand three. November two thousand three. Hot games. Well, I was talking about the year in which your cousins ruined your life, but sure. Oh, oh, I don't know. From two thousand and. Five to 2015. What was the big game that Liam loved in that period? Devil May Cry. <laughs> Delete, three. Deleting Liam's Devil May Cry save files so he can't play all the post game stuff. He just has to start again. Deleting, uh, you know you know what happened? Alright, this is what I imagine started the whole punk Raven feud. Mm -hmm. Punk came over to Raven's, right? Raven's like, alright, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go head out, grab some food, see you in a minute. Came back, Punk was playing, WWE Smackdown, here comes the pain. Right. And Raven's like, I don't, I don't recognize these crater wrestlers. And he's like, oh yeah, I just made my own. I just deleted over some of the ones you had. And then that's when Raven knew, I'm coming for this game. He deleted the Raven cause, the add in CM Punk cause. The modded Raven inserts that you had to like, <laughs> hack in. So you could get Raven in the game. Yeah, the Raven and the Vampiro cause that were in there. I wonder if it was Raven in, here comes the pain. I can find out for you if it's right here on my screen. Mm. Damn it, why would it have the roster? <laughs> was Here Come the Pain 2002 or 2003? It was 2003, right? 2003. That's because I'm on the hot games of 2003 page. Yeah. Uh, it does not look like Raven was on this roster. I'm up, unless he's in Legends. Is he in Legends? He is a legend. Is he in NPCs? Is he in Divas? <laughs> he's definitely in Divas. This is a Divas match. Yeah, there's no Raven. Yeah, because he left in January, so it's probably right in the edge of whether or not he's Rodney Mack him. made it. It's a Mac Militant. Come to get it all. Okay, I'm see who's the funniest person that's in this game. <laughs> no one. Well, <laughs> Ultimo Dragon. Oh, cool. 
Plus, he has the Ricky Steamboat music. Yeah. Well, it's the Ultimate Dragon music, but it became Ricky Steamboat's music. Well, we got um, George Steele. We got TNA legend Roddy Piper in here. Mm-hmm. That's about it. <laughs> Maybe this game sucks. I'm going to take a hard anti Here Comes the Pain stance. There you go. It's only the one people like. Yeah. I'm going to be like you with wrestling. <laughs> just, just be against the thing people, people like. like it, so I'm going to shit on it. Hey, I'm not a contrarian. I'm just right. Sounds like a contrarian. So Raven comes out, he's about to wrestle the red shirts, and he's like, I need somebody as sadistic, as crazy as I am. And you just see Punk and Julio standing in the background being like, is he going to pick me? Is he going to pick me? Is it going to be me? <laughs> they, keep, they keep pointing to each other too. Because like. they're, they're fine if it's either of them, Liam. They just want to help Raven, their pal. What if he was like, Alexis Lurie. <laughs> Hardcore country. <laughs> she comes out as Vicky James. So Raven announces that he will be teaming with the Sandman. He, he's like and here's Sandman and the gathering are all sad Raven and the Sandman face the Red Shirts Red Shirts win uh, after Joey Legend returns should have picked Punk he should have picked Punk or Julio Julio would have been there at ringside if he picked Punk so Julio could have stopped Legend from interfering okay, that's why you gotta trust the gathering so yeah Legend returns join the Red Shirt security to cost Raven and Sandman the match to set up the following week a, a six man tag team Clockwork Orange House of Fun match as Raven, Sandman and Watts face Northcutt, Wilson and Legend I, I liked this match and didn't care about this match at the same time. I said, I hope Liam gives this tons of stars like he did Punk MJF because we all love formless, aimless, heatless brawlings with now apparently once there's some blood. Hey, remember when you were like th- two minutes ago that you're like, oh, I'm not a contrarian. <laughs> that is the exact note that I wrote in my notes. <laughs> Someone was feeling s- sassy at the time. I was nothing if not petty. So hey, Liam, oh, you like this you match? just hate it when people like things, huh? The best part of this match was the red... Uh, were, well, actually, it was what's bleeding out on the outside. Mm-hmm. But highlight here, Red Shirt's literally doing a shield bomb. Yeah, damn right. They're the better shield. And yeah, just bad blood. No, that's a WWE show. No, they are bad blood. They should bring on bad blood and use that song. A missed opportunity. So the story here is that Raven and Sandman broke Wilson's arm to take him out of the, the Red Shirts because Joey Legend basically is going to replace Wilson in the Red Shirt security. If you're Wilson, you must feel like shit... <laughs> Yeah, because th- there's no PW Torch. The-, the buzz in the locker room is that Joey Legend is going to replace Ryan Wilson and the Retro Security gimmick. Wilson's best asset is considered his body, but even friends admit that he is too green for the position he's been given. Wilson is the same wrestler who worked as humongous on indie events in the Southeast and was once considered a strong prospect by many in TNA, and still will be, will come back to Ryan Wilson in the year 2005. Ooh, I'm excited. I like Northgate. Yeah, he's not good, but he's, like, good enough. And he'll do, like, a J-Driller out of nowhere. Mm. I forget, was it was it Northcutt or Legend or what? So they were like, knows all these uh, martial arts and was a bouncer on Bourbon Street. I, I didn't even hear that. Oh, there was, they mentioned it and I was like, I could imagine that being Northcutt, but I could also 100% see <laughs> Watts doing that. <laughs> oh no, we missed the interrogator segment on NWTNA Baby number 70, which we did for the watch along uh, with Eric Watts and Goldilocks, Liam. Yes. Uh, a true blue couple, huh? The Goldilocks looked rough here. She's been looking rough since she came back. The the whole thing is that she's like side eyeing Eric, everything Eric Watts says, but they're still like lovey dovey. It's uh, she's having a bad time with this Eric Watts relationship. They are truly a toxic relationship, <laughs> but also like one where I can't imagine them without each other at the same time. Mm-hmm. Like, they're both terrible for each other, but they're meant for each other. And her, like, her blouse is dirty. There's just, like, mud on it. I think that was the design of it. I don't think so. It's just, like, if it is, it's a very strange design for those clothes. Have you seen what everything else about her? <laughs> do, you, do you think that wouldn't be a design choice? I don't know. It's because she looked normal on the next show, because she was in the, the House of Fun match, because she was trying to, like, cheer on Eric Watts while he was bleeding out on the floor, as mentioned. But... She, she looked normal and well-dressed in that match, as opposed to here. I don't, I don't know. She's going through a phase right now. She is. Eric Watts is bad for people. Uh, Goldilocks might just be bad for Eric Watts, too. It's true. <laughs> I think it's both ways. I think they're just... They're truly, truly toxic. Yeah, so they asked her about Scott Hudson, and she gave out that Scott Hudson stole her job. Scab. They asked about Lex Luger, to which Eric Watts responded, more like Lex Loser. Owned. Goldilocks Prince and Van Halen. Same. Uh, they wanted to know, but Don was like, hey, what about your sex life? <laughs> and they're like, yeah, we fuck. It's kind of the major thing of this character. And then it ended with Goldilocks being like, hey, you're going to get rid of Don Callis, right? Right, Eric? You're going to get rid of him, right? Eric, you're going to get rid of him, huh? 
they're gonna get me my job back, right? Mm. And I know for PW George, Eric Watts and Goldilocks are a couple on TV, but are not dating in real life. Ah, the sheet's wrong again. Don't believe it for a second. <laughs> the rag sheet's always trying to tear down good wrestling fucking relationships and stories. I, I just, I truly don't believe it. So, NWTNA baby number 71, <laughs> Kevin Northcutt <laughs> challenges Raven to a match. Later in the show, Raven shows up on the announce desk where his, 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 head, his head is covered in a bandage, but the blood is still just trickling out under the bandage. This is one of the most disgusting pro wrestling things I have ever seen. Because uh, he bleeds more and more the longer he talks. It's gross. This is true blood. TNA is the blood promotion. Nowhere else. True blood? It's true blood? Yeah, damn right. I wish you were watching True Blood. So yeah, Raven says, he cuts a promo about how oh, the red shirts are just going to keep coming for me. I face Northcutt next week. It'll be Legend the week after. And then there'll be another obstacle in my way. So next week, I'll face Northcutt and Legend. Which is fair enough. Which does bring us to the last show of the month in which Raven faces Northcutt and Legend in a two-on-one handicap match. And it's fine. Yeah, he beats Northcutt. Who does he beat? He beats one of them. Mm. And then it's a DQ on the other one. So there you go. What a story. What a, what a match. Ooh. Oh, Raven does like the the promo on that show too. Yeah, so yeah, sorry. He beats Legend with the Raven effect. And then Legend comes back in, which isn't a DQ for some reason. But then Abyss runs out to attack them, which is the DQ. Mm. So they beat down. The Styles takes out Abyss before the Gathering runs out to take out the Red Shirts. And Raven is like, oh, we're still not friends, are we? And they were like, we love you, man. <laughs> Let us love you. <laughs> Please hug us. So then uh, before the main event, Raven cuts a promo out for one night only. He and the Gathering will reunite to face the Red Shirts and Abyss next oh, week. Oh, well, now you're just, now you're leading them on. <laughs> Listen, they desperately want it. He'll just, he'll just give them little crumbs. That's, not, uh, that's more toxic than Goldilocks and Watts. Mm. Goldie Watts. Go- <laughs> Goldie Watts. <laughs> It's adorable. Gathering also beats Siaki and Ekmo this month. Actually, I have a note about that match. Sure, shoot. This was Shades of Extreme Rules 2009, CM Punk and Umaga. And as you may know, that was Umaga's last WWE match. Oh, you didn't tell me it was a sad note. Yeah, but it was just, a, I thought it was an interesting uh, thing that I know. I was like, ah, that these two would eventually, like, what, six years later, wrestle in a... Umaga's last WWE match. Mm. So this is the beginning of their rivalry here in November 2003 TNA. Yeah, in the, the program where Umaga started to speak. Yeah. Cut promos. I think this is the last we've seen of Ekmo for a year. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Punk, bad luck for Ekmo. Mm. 